Hello, everybody. We're just waiting for a few more people to show up. Yes, I put cheesy, uh, copyright-free music in the background there. Hello, Kiefer. Let me pull up my own video here while we are at it. I just thought this was funny, stupid, little holdy music while we wait for some people to show up, so... Where is my video so I can look at my chats? Hello. There we go. It's not showing my video yet. Alrighty, there we are. Okay. Alright, we got a few on here. Let's fade out the cheesy music. I don't know. Do you guys like that? I thought that was kind of fun. Just to do just to do something with some cheesy little hold music while we get going. Uh, very happy to see you guys here. Also, very happy to say this is the third episode of Brews and Blades, where I'm going to drink a beer, and we're going to talk about some knives, and we're going to have a really good time. And in a little bit, I have some uh, very a very cool announcement coming up. I really hope that uh, you guys are excited as, about it as I am. I think you're going to. It's going to revolutionize the knife world. Probably not, but I think you guys will be happy about it. And it's not just about me. It's about me and a couple other guys. So I hope you guys and look forward to that. First of all, I have to start out, while well, we're still waiting for some people to show up, I have to start out by saying thank you so much to all of you. I have passed a 1,000 subscribers Yay! If this was like one of those iPhone text message things that automatically puts the balloons in. The balloons would pop up right now. I'm very, very happy about that. Uh, it happened much sooner than I expected it to. And it's a big milestone on YouTube. That means now that you can apply for monetization. Not that I'm going to make any money at it probably. But it's a nice thing to have. I'm still in in review. So we'll see how that goes. But uh, I don't think I've done anything that would make them not do it. So I'll get to the beer in a minute. Keep your pants on, Kiefer. I'm trying to say thank you to everybody. So um, just thank you guys so much. I'm very humbled. I'm, I've gotten so many nice compliments about uh, the channel. And I've gotten so much support from the community and other channels. I am very grateful. I'm very just humbled by it. And that's the only word I can use to describe it. I keep saying it. But... Uh, this is this is how I've made my living for 20 years, is you just find a passion and you pursue it and find a way that you can pursue it. And that's what I've done with this. So I just, I watched a lot of other YouTube stuff. I've reviewed a lot of stuff and I thought I could probably do that and let me give it a shot. And it's, it's worked okay. So I'm quite happy about that. Um, next, of course, I want to thank also, on top of thanking you guys, our sponsors, Weeha! Uh, they are providing uh, some little giveaways for us. Very appreciative of that. They came to me about it, and we kind of came up with the idea of the show. Not together. I mean, I was a, already had the idea for the show, but they kind of gave me the incentive to push me over the edge to make me do it. And thank you guys so much. And the giveaway tonight, we'll do a trivia question later. And as it was last week, the giveaway will be uh, this three... Uh, what do they call these? T-handle uh, Torx bit drivers, T6, T8, T10. We'll give those away. I'm going to do a little trivia question later. And then uh, one of you guys will win this. I'm going to hold off the announcement for just a little bit until uh, we have our usual amount of people on. Uh, we're only four minutes in, so I like to give everybody 10 or 15 minutes to show up before I do anything huge. All right, uh, let's, let's talk about the beer. You guys are asking about the beer. What am I drinking tonight? Tonight... I'm going pretty simple, but my go-to standby, really, I would say, is just a simple Brooklyn lager. You can get it everywhere, but it's great, and that's what I'm going with tonight. Opening it with my Kershaw Shuffle. As I've said before, terrible knife, great bottle opener. So I do like that. Oh, and now it's going to open the bottle. There we go. All righty. Take a little swig of that. Oh, don't you dilly dilly me, Kiefer. I 
you're off my Christmas card list. You know, I'm such an old man. I didn't watch the Super Bowl because I can't stand the Patsies. I'm glad they lost, but I don't even know what the Dilly Dilly thing is. I'm such an old man, I don't even know. <laughs> I know it's something to do with a beer commercial. That's all I really know about it. Ah, that's tasty. Never, uh, never fails me, the Brooklyn Lager. That's kind of my default beer is when I can't, if I'm in a store searching for a beer and I can't decide what to get, when in doubt, go Brooklyn. It's everywhere and it's pretty good stuff. So, all right, what do we have coming up on the channel this week? Uh, tomorrow morning, gonna get all French up in here and I'm gonna do a, a review of several, not a review, I guess, more of an ode to Open L. I have several of them. I love the Open L knives, these wooden. Which one am I gonna grab here? Yeah, this is the one I actually probably carry and use the most. Open L number seven, but um, the Carbone. Uh, yeah, I love Open L stuff. I've been trying to find a way to squeeze them in here, and uh, I finally figured out what to do with it. I wound up just playing it straight. I was trying to find something funny, but uh. I want to play it pretty straight, but just a little history of Open L and why, if you don't own one, I don't understand you. It's They're so cheap, and if you are a knife collector, you should have at least one Open L. I've got four. Yeah, I have two number eights, Kiefer. They're pretty cool. Um, I use Open L to get my wife into knives. Yeah, my wife really likes uh, the one. When you, if you watch tomorrow, you'll see there's one that lives in our kitchen drawer. Uh, I've got a number 10 with the corkscrew in it, integrated into it, and uh, she really likes it. And uh, actually, I've almost got her talked into letting me buy the Open L kitchen knives. I do all the cooking, so I'd really like to have the... Uh, this dilly dilly thing becomes a thing, I swear to God. I swear to God, I will do nothing about it. But I'm just going to ignore the dilly dilly from now on. So, all right. <laughs> so, uh Oh, you're not that late, A-Ray. We haven't gotten anything really yet. But yeah, I got the Open L video tomorrow. Um, and then sometime later in the week, I don't know what order the rest are going to come out. Uh, next week or week and a half, probably. Uh, I'm going to do this case sod buster. I got it just to do a comparison thing with. And um, I actually want it being bigger than I expected it to be. But I wanted to do a, a cheap, cheapish kind of traditional. So you have the case sod buster coming up. Uh, next up, I don't have it here anymore because I already mailed it back uh, to its rightful owner, but the Boker Excalibur, Excalibur, sorry, and I'm doing the full titanium version, but uh, spoiler alert, I loved it so much that I actually, uh, I'm going to be in Germany in um, April and they're cheaper over there and I called a dealer that is in the town we're staying in and reserved one of the carbon fiber titanium ones I already paid for it, he's going to hold on to it for me and I'll bring it back. Um, Great, cool S thirty five VN front flipper, awesome, cool knife. Look it up, the Boker Excalibur. I'm not even going to try to tell you how to spell it because if I don't look at it, I don't remember myself. They spell it really crazy. Uh, also coming up in the next couple of days, this ZT O four five two, nice loaner from the same gentleman who loaned me the Boker Excalibur. It's a giant pocket sword. Didn't think I'd like it. It's kind of growing on me. It really is. Uh, I see why people love these things so much. It is pretty cool. Not 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 a new knife by any means. Um, a, a fairly new knife, though. I'm going to be doing a review of the Statgear Ossus. Um, yeah, it is a bit too big for me, too, Kiefer. It's not something I'd carry every day for sure. But this is... Uh, I will not explain to you exactly why I bought the Statgear Ossus, but it rhymes with Ficarda. I'm addicted to my card, and I saw these handles, and I was like, oh my god, I have to try that. And, uh, yeah, I used to own the 0450, I actually sold it. Um, this is this is a, a kind of cool knife, and definitely not without its flaws, but uh, we'll have a full review of that coming up. Uh, also, I don't have it in front of me at the moment, but uh, the CRKT Havas, or HVAS, or just Vas, however you choose to pronounce it, it's one of the... Um, the field strip technology ones, so I was really excited to try that out. So uh, I should have that on Monday, so probably later in the week I will have a review of that. And I'm finally going to do what I said and break into other EDC stuff things. So um, one of the first things I'm going to do uh, actually is 
kind of some cheap stuff. I am in love with these Zebra brand pens. And the pencil, one of them is a pencil. And this is the higher end, the F701. And then you've got the 301 and the pencil. Um, I I really like these. They're for if you want something that looks classy, and it's it's cool. I, I really like these. They're classy, they're cheap, they're cool. Yes, I am gonna do some flashlights. I'm not sure which one I will start out with. Most likely this Thorfire uh, PFO2, because I have one. So I'll probably start doing that. But yeah, I, I, I've been saying for months I'm gonna do it. Finally gonna do it, so. You you muted Forged and Fire for me. Well, I feel very, very, very uh, honored by that. I do like Forged and Fire. What's up with that guy? The, one, the guy got hurt really bad, didn't he? The one guy that was in it? I thought I saw that the guy who says it will kill got really, really injured. But yeah, the Thor Fire stuff's pretty cool. This one is, the only the reason I don't carry this more is it's longer than I thought it was gonna be and it doesn't fit in my little zip up EDC pack or I'd carry it a lot more often. I do really like it other than that. Um, somebody asked something else. I wanted to scroll back here on one thing as well. Can you refer me to anyone who does mods on the scales of my knives? It depends on what you got. Go to Instagram. Instagram is the best place best place to see stuff. So, GCB67, you said you're listening to me. Yeah. Um, interesting you should bring that up. We'll get to that in a moment about listening to me. It, it will tie into our big announcement. Uh, farther on down the road, stuff that I've got coming... Uh, I had an email question. Somebody asked about what I've pre-ordered. So here are my pre-orders. Oh, you watch The Walking Dead. Zombies, I will not lie. Zombies scare the holy hell out of me. I don't watch anything zombie. I don't, nothing to do with it. Um, here we go. Pre-orders. So stuff coming up. A lot of people have asked me what I pre-ordered from Spider Co. I pre-ordered the Smock and the Amalgam. So I've got those coming whenever the hell they're available. I don't know exactly when they're coming out. So those two from Spider Co. I have also pre-ordered from Kershaw the Natrix Copper and the Bare Knuckle. I've got those both coming. Very excited about those. I'm really excited about that Copper Natrix because it's just going to patina and look terrible and it's going to be beautiful and I'm going to love it. Uh... And another one I'm super excited about is I got in on the Mass Drop Schwartz Perpetua. And I really, 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 really want to see that. So did I order my, my G5? Oh, yeah. No, it's on the way. That's going to be here on Monday. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody was asking about the Metamorph. I gave It's already in a, a box on its way to the guy who won it. So I can't show it to you. But, yeah, I ordered a Metamorph. Uh, I gave away the blue one. And I immediately, that moment, within 10 minutes of that video ending, I got it. Uh, the metamorph and gray. I can't wait to get the real steel metamorph and gray. So, but yeah, the but the one I'm most excited about, I think, is the Schwartz Perpetua. I, I think that just looks like a it's everything I love and a lot of things that are kind of this isn't as good, I don't think, but in similar to this and in, in the stack gear Aussies, it's just a very purposeful utilitarian design. I think that's that's what I like about it. I think the mass drop, if you look at the Schwartz Perpetua on mass drop it is very just purposeful design and it was not terribly expensive i want to say it was like 110 bucks it wasn't bad and um very happy to have that coming that's already paid for and all that they estimate delivery june 29th so it's gonna be a while but i'm still excited about it i like i like purposeful handsome but not crazy looking knives i really do that's that's always gonna be kind of my jam let's uh bust out a couple other knives here that are my jam also just to keep things changing I have the bench made proper and yeah we'll just grab this my Wii ignition these are two knives i carry a whole lot what is oh it's the beer bottle that's blocking I'm like what is that shadow it's my beer bottle that's what that is all right we're gonna do the trivia question here in just a moment but uh, I think I've dicked around long enough. Are you guys ready for the big announcement? Okay. Here's what... Oh, I'm for somebody... The Skaha. Every time I see Skaha, I want one so bad, but there's no way in hell I'm ever going to get my hands on one. They're so hard to buy. But here's the big announcement. Okay. I drive a lot. Uh, a little background, a little personal information on me. Um, I am divorced and we get along great everything's fine but my kids do live 
an hour and 10 minutes away from me. So once a week or so, I'm driving all the way down there to pick them up and coming back and then going back and back again. So all in total, but we stop for gas and stuff. I spend six, seven hours a week in a car. I don't like to listen to music when I drive. I'm weird. Uh, unless I'm driving around the city, I listen to ridiculous rap music because I'm, uh, I'm a 43-year-old child. But when I'm out driving I just and I'm on the highway, I just like to listen to words and audio, audiobooks and podcasts. There aren't that many really good knife podcasts. Have you noticed that? There's a couple. Knife Nuts is all right. Uh, knife Cast has uh, Dr. Frunky, who is a good friend of the channel. They're great. They're, he's a super intelligent guy. Um, definitely knows more about knives than I do. And the rest of the guys on the show are great, too. Uh, but there's just really those two. And as happened when I started this channel, I started watching other knife review stuff. And I thought, hey, um, I could maybe do that. I listened to a bunch of these knife podcasts, and I thought, hey, maybe I could do that. So, I knew I couldn't do it alone. I didn't know that. So I called a couple of my buddies, who know more about knives than I do, harangued them into it, and starting on or about April 1st, there is going to be a roughly bi-weekly Slicey Dicey podcast with myself... Brian from Slicey Dicey, Zelric, and Stasa23. We're going to get together. Those channels are great. They're linked down below. If you guys already scrolled and read down below, you kind of already got the spoiler of the announcement if you saw a link to their channels. But it's going to be myself, Zelric, Stasa23, doing a knife podcast. We've already started planning out the formatting. I think it's going to be really good. We think maybe it's even got a sponsor. It's going to be awesome. There may be some giveaways and stuff. We're not quite sure how stuff's going to work off the bat. But uh, we're just ironing stuff out at the moment. But everybody's agreed. Everybody's agreed on the name and all that stuff. It's going to be called Slicey Dicey. Mostly because I own the URL. And uh, and I'm going to be doing all the technical stuff on it. So uh, I've done this before. This is not my first rodeo. You don't have to worry about that. Um, I have... We're just going to record it all on the computer from Skype or whatever, and I'll put it up. It'll be on iTunes and Google Play and all those things. It will be available on YouTube, but the YouTube thing is going to be pretty boring. Uh, it's just going to be us talking in a static image. But I am going to start a separate channel for Slice Daisy Podcasts. And so if you want to listen on YouTube, that's another part of the reason why I did this, is a lot of you have told me in emails and stuff that you don't watch my reviews you listen to them in the car but they're playing over youtube you just listen to the audio and some of you guys have said tonight that you're just listening so if you're just listening why don't i do something that you can just listen to and you're not missing anything so i'm excited about that we have some stuff that we some seg regular segments we want to do i know one we talked about was uh i don't want to have a show I've, I've been involved in lots of podcasts for comedy things i've been involved in producing television if everyone agrees it's boring I don't want everyone to agree, and that's part of the reason why I picked these two guys, because I really respect them, but I don't agree with everything that they say, and I know they feel the same about me. So it'll be fun to have some lighthearted disagreements every now and then. So there's going to be a segment called The Airing of Grievances, where we're just going to talk about what each other has said on our channels in the last couple of weeks that we don't agree with. I think that'll be fun. Um, that's probably going to be an every episode kind of thing. Uh, and we're going to focus mostly on... I'm sure there's going to be a lot of high-end custom stuff come up every now and then, but a lot of the other Knife podcasts are very high-end focused, and that's awesome. But uh, I can't afford that stuff, so sometimes they're talking about knife makers I've never even freaking heard of. So we're going to focus a lot more on production and stuff, and I'm not saying we're going to be a G-rated show, but we're going to keep it more in the at least the PG-13 range. I curse like a parrot in my regular life, but I know enough to keep my mouth shut when I'm on some kind of broadcast thing. So you just keep it a, a little bit more PG and a little bit uh, more production and accessible focus. So that's kind of what the goal of the show is going to be. So I hope you guys will like it. Slicey Dicey Podcasts, uh, the, the URL I have already bought is SliceyDiceyKnives.com. 
I'm going to do a bunch of stuff with that, but that's where it's initially going to be available. Um, and then it'll be Slicey Dicey Podcasts uh, or something like that on YouTube, and all of us will have access to it. We'll all reply to your comments and all that stuff. So it's going to be a joint effort between the three of us. It does have my name on it. Uh, they said that was cool, but um, it's it is going to be most, it's going to be definitely a a joint effort. Um, I, I couldn't definitely do it without those two guys, and and I'm so happy I got them to help me out because they are both great channels and it, they're really going to help me out and I'm sure save my butt from saying really stupid things <laughs> so sometimes so very excited about that so and I'm, it looks like some of you guys are too so that's awesome uh yeah so look out for and I'll definitely we'll pimp it on all of our channels and stuff when Slay Stacy podcast is up and running uh, again we're aiming for like we're going to film in or film tape in a week or so and then it'll be out i'm, I'm aiming for like april 1st because it's going to be the first time i got to figure everything out so but we're looking forward to it my buddy is a podcasting genius so if uh if he has a hard time or if i have a hard time he'll come over and just do it for me <laughs> so he's he's a genius uh by the way speaking of that genius carlson cast go find it on your itunes and your stuff Carlson cast so yeah but that is the announcement Slicey Daisy podcast is coming with the help of Zellerick and Stasa and I am super excited about it JC says the gent is available master up again it is and I am just uh can't can't uh pull the trigger on it yet today so I'm hoping I get paid tomorrow by this guy who says he's gonna pay me so I have the money to get it I really want to get a gent those are super cool um you have two coming, Eldritch. You are a greedy, greedy, greedy bastard. But that's fine, I guess. No, it's just my lighting makes the blade look gray, so. No, it, yeah, not on April 1st, definitely. Also, I hate I hate April Fool's Day for two reasons. First of all, I think the pranks are stupid. And second of all, it's my father's birthday, and he passed away five years ago tomorrow. So I, I hate April 1st, too. I would never put anything out on April 1st. That's why I said on or about April 1st. It'll be somewhere around there. Um, I don't need any more reasons to remember that day. So uh, let's get to the trivia question before we get any farther, because I've made you guys sit through the announcement, and you guys have been very patient, and I do appreciate that. So here is the trivia question. I have to make sure it's not printed on. It is printed on here, so I can only show you one side of it. As always, the trivia question answer is available in a previous video. Here's how the trivia contest works. Do not reply in the live posts. Do not reply in the live posts because A, you give it away, and B, it's hard for me to go back and find out who replied on the live stuff because YouTube doesn't keep the live stuff. So, all right. Here we go. Reply down below in the comments once the video ends. You have 24 hours, so you don't have to sit here through the whole video and wait till it ends. You got 24 hours. Reply down below with the answer to this, and I will not make you spell it correctly. Who designed the CRKT Pilar? Who designed the CRKT Pilar? Definitely not our most difficult question that we've had, but, uh, you know, I just had 1,000 subs and I'm happy, so I'm not going to make you guys work too hard. Who designed the CRKT Pilar? Wait till the video is over and put it down below. All right. So here we go. Let's get into the just plain old q and I think that's all the stuff I really wanted to get through on this. And we are 24 minutes in, so I'm pretty happy with that. So you're holding a Pilar in your hand? Well, so am I. That sounds like a euphemism. But yeah, I I like this little thing. It's pretty cool. Uh, I I it should be better, like everyone has said about it. If you watch my review of it, it's a it's a knife that could have been outstanding that just wound up being pretty good, you know. But uh, it's 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 still great. I love the design and stuff. It's just why is it not made out of like like shouldn't a blade like that that just be made like out of d2 without even thinking about it that's just a d2 beat it up blade put d2 on it and it would be fine i'd also like to have some bronze bushings instead of the plastic stuff but it does work fine i've been carrying it a fair bit i can't i think i'm just being picky because it just i don't beat it up but um yeah i'm very interested to see 
the CRKT Havas that's supposed to be here tomorrow. Um, I think that's going to be pretty cool. It has the home front technology. It's still got the the uh, plastic bushings in it, but it's a little nicer uh, steel. So you just got rid of your lady friend to watch. Would you just kick her out into the snow and say, I got to watch YouTube, ma'am? Please step outside. M390 would be great, obviously. That's always great. I'll just say about that. So don't reply with the answer in the thing. Re wait till the video's over and then and then reply with your answer. I deleted your message. I am drunk with my tiny amount of power. Uh, yeah, but wait till the answer is or wait till the video is over and then reply with that. So. Yeah, the gent is a little small. That's another thing that kind of made me pause before. Uh, I didn't commit to it. I hit the notify me when the drop is available, but I didn't actually just buy it where the uh, the uh, Schwartz Perpetua I just bought because I knew I'd really like it. What brew am I drinking? I covered for it. Brooklyn Lager. This is kind of my fallback beer. This or um, Stella. Stella Artois. So, it's having fun in the snow. Yeah, it's a. Uh, I'm sick of the snow, man. Oh, you know what happened to me? This is something that only Mr. Gear Bear can uh, identify with. Here is what happened to me. Uh, yesterday morning, the snow is pretty much melted. It's been okay. Let's switch some knives out while I'm yakking here. Um, the snow has been all right. And then uh, the snow plows decided to go through and take one more swipe at everything. And I got up yesterday morning to a. I shit you not, 120 pound block of ice in my driveway that uh, snowplow hit and deposited in my driveway. So that was a fun morning. And I had to get out because we were doing St. Patrick's Day early yesterday. I'm about as Irish as they come and my mom was coming over for dinner. I had to go get her at her home and drive her over here and I had to uh, deal with a 120 pound block of ice. So, uh, that was fun, but dinner went well. I am more, um, I am more, uh, more, ro more, uh, corned beef than man at the moment, but other than that, it's okay. So I've had corned beef for my last, oh, uh, three out of four of my last meals, but I'm okay. <laughs> so <laughs> on the right, oh, this is, it's, I have a review up here. This is the Mazarin Plow from uh, Collector Knives. It's uh, pretty cool. My car to handle, D2 blade, uh, pretty cool. $30 knife. It's pretty cheap, actually. So, um, yeah. Uh, go watch. The, go back and watch that review. I really like it. It's a cool knife. I carry it a fair amount. Little big for how I like my traditionals. I've learned over time, but, but still pretty cool. Uh, yeah, what else do I have coming up? I already covered everything I've got coming up this week. Um... Oh, one thing I forgot, I am going to do... It is a bit fat for your pocket, it's, but it's not awful. It's not the fatness that bothers me in my pocket because it's well contoured. It's just the length of it because it kind of falls down and goes sideways across your pocket. So you ordered an American law, man, and every time you, you think of it, you're going to you hear you you're gonna sing the song American Lawman. Okay, here's the thing I'm going to do, guys. And um, I wasn't going to announce this tonight. I was going to wait until another time. But in my links down below, there's a Patreon link. All right? If, which I'm nowhere as near, I reach... I said, I'm just going to pull an amount out of my ass at the moment. If I reach $150 a month on Patreon from you guys, or if someone just wants to donate to my PayPal and I get a good chunk. I won't say what it is, but if enough people start donating on PayPal that way, I gave instructions down below to do that. If I reach 150 a month on Patreon or get a good chunk, I will complete the American Lawman song. I have a buddy who's uh, is very good at writing funny songs and he's we it's it's already done. I will say there is a complete version of the American Lawman song. And um it's not recorded or anything, but the the lyrics are written. And I have lots of musician friends, so I could make the American Lawman song happen. And it'll be more than just me saying, American Lawman! It'll be, there's a verse and a chorus and everything. It's a proper song. 
So, uh, and this, we're idiot comedians and we get obsessed with stuff and we just do it. So, um, yeah, look, look it up and, uh, you know, look up the Patreon and stuff. If you guys, if you guys want to hear me embarrass myself, I am a whore and I will do it. So you want a knife called Rawhide to sing to? That would be too easy. That's already a song that exists. Yeah. Uh, Woodland that makes torches best out there. Yeah, I've, I've never had any of their stuff. I am quite satisfied with the Weeha stuff at the moment, so I don't really seek much out at all. So, um... Oh, I see what you're saying. I thought you were saying another comp company. Woodland Tactical's on here. You know what I am? Easily confused. That's what I am. See, so, uh, yeah... Yeah, we, we have more than a three-day summer, Mr. Gear. Mr. Gear Bear lives, like, 15 miles from me. Um, We have more than a three-day summer. We have, like, a three-week summer. It's not the worst. Rochester, New York. I um had a long drive down 390 today and was reminded of how boring it is to drive through open expanses of upstate New York, though. It's... Everyone who comes and visits says it's beautiful, but to those of us who live here, it's just an expanse of nothing. I don't know if you guys feel that way about it, but uh, it's a it's a great place to live. It's it's not as expensive as everybody thinks. It's not a an acre of it just acres and acres of concrete, but um, yeah. Wake up, you live! What am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? I got I just started waxing about uh, upstate New York. There was one more thing I wanted to bring up. Oh, here's a knife. I'm going to do a poll here. Do you guys want me to review this? Uh, I have a Schrade. Technically assisted. Technically not. An, it's an OTF, but technically assisted, not automatic. I've been debating. I did a little thing, Christmas, uh, Christmas toys, and I think I used this and that. And some people said maybe they wanted a review, but I'm debating whether or not I should do a review of that, so... The Bastion Brazen Knife. I don't even know what that is. So, yeah, post it in the link down below, and I'll check it while we're all hanging out here. Um, uh, too much New York State government. I will not comment on that. I will leave that one be. Try not to get too political and stuff. Um, let's grab some stuff out of the case, some weird stuff. Right, hold on one second. Here's a favorite of the channel. Everybody always raves about whenever I have any. This, this thing is like, this uh, Spider Co Shaman is the, uh, this is like the Brad Pitt of my channel. Anytime I do uh, anything mentioning the Spider Co Shaman and put it on camera or put it, you know, everybody just, I get a, a bunch of views. So this is just shamelessly putting a Spider Co Shaman on there so that people will check it out. will <laughs> check out the channel. So, uh, yeah. Um Yeah, it's a it's it is a cool knife and I you know it's it's I've actually been carrying it a lot again lately. I kind of stopped for a while and now I have been again. So whenever I do another EDC update in a couple weeks or whatever, I would I'll probably include it because it's been around a lot. It's, it is a very good workhorse kind of knife. It's a lot of fun. Any more uh pointed questions for me? I am very excited about the podcast. That was the main thing I wanted to get out. Let's do the trivia question again one more time. If you guys are joining us late, again, do not reply in the live chat. Wait till the video is over. Reply in the comments. The question is, who designed... I almost buried it for a second. Who designed this knife? This knife, the CRKT Pilar. Who designed this? That is the trivia question. Uh, it is a, not a hard one to answer. You can find the information anywhere, but wait till this is over. Reply in the comments, and then uh, I will do a random selection, and someone will win one of these little three Torx tool kits from Weeha. All right, that's pretty easy. It's not Mr. Pilar. <laughs> that may be my new name when I check into a hotel. This this is Mr. Pilar. And this is not 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 my my real name. Mister Pilar is my real name. It'd be fun. Still liking these carbon scales, by the way, on my PM2. They are pretty flippin' sweet. So, 
It won't let me post it. You have a review on your channel? Okay, I'll check it out. I like your channel, by the way. I just, uh, I actually, I will admit I subscribed to it a while ago, but Woodland Tactical, I have not, um, I had not really honestly watched it until the last couple of days. You got some good stuff on there. Yeah. I'm hoping to be woodland -y soon. Uh, that's, uh, I'm hoping to get back out hiking and stuff again. My wife's interested in it, and we've already started to buy some stuff. She had to get some new boots. She found some she's happy with, so I think uh, we'll be out banging away in the woods again soon, and I'm very much looking forward to it. It's great, so... Uh, you don't have this same PM2 for sale for 220 because this has... He only made two pairs of these scales, and I know exactly where they are. So I have one, and uh, a friend of mine has the other. So these are uh, carbon scales. Um, it looks... I know which one you're thinking. It looks like... It looks just like when you glance at it, the spider, one of the Spyderco uh, sprint runs, but it isn't. These are custom carbon scales from Shepard CC. And this is on the S35VN one, so... Uh, I really love this knife. This is actually probably what I carry the most. This or my Sebenza are what I carry the most. Or perhaps today, uh, one that's also kind of creeped back into the rotation more lately is my Spyderco Domino. Um, light knife, or the life of a knife YouTuber. Kind of almost forgot that I had a Domino. <laughs> and, uh, I've had it just stored away in the case with the collection, and then I was watching a video, and somebody mentioned uh, Domino and how much they loved it, and I'm like, oh yeah, I have one of those. I'm gonna get mine, so. Oh, you've got it on the S110V. I have an S110V Eldritch, and that was, r I almost put it on the S110V, and I still might switch them. I don't know, but, uh, for now, I like it on the S35. For some reason, the action on my S35 PM2 is just a bit better than on my S110V. So, neither of them are bad, but, um, yeah. You're able to bash it through a branch. and you So, you made a splint out of a stick and a PM2. All right, let's just give everybody a round of applause for Woodland Tactical for being more man than us can we do that round of applause make little clappy emojis i've never been that badly hurt in the woods every time um i got hurt in the woods i was mountain biking and there I was racing and there was an ambulance nearby so uh i did i did take a ride in a couple of those ambulances but um <laughs> i never uh never had to worry about anything like that wow we did have to call in a helicopter and have a guy helicoptered out once. That was that was pretty scary. Yeah, the Flitanium PM2 JC has never never interested me. Um I don't know, it's just uh, yeah, it seems like a lot of weight for just something's a bit prettier. I think the going custom scales of carbon or whatever. I do have my um it's also gone right now. I sent it out to my friend to have him sharpen it up all pretty. Uh Oh, wait, no, I didn't. I decided not to. I sharpened it myself. Anywho, I don't have it right here where I can reach it. But um, I am sending my uh, my uh, Steel Will Cut Jack M390 off to get... Um, well, they're going to mail me the scales, some nice uh, micarta scales on that. So I'm kind of getting into customizing my knives, I guess, a little bit. But I never thought that was something I'd get into. I thought I'd just stick with production stuff. But the customizing is... It's fun. It's fun. And I did some horse trading for these and... Man, they look great. And, I mean, you compare it to the... This is a ZT0452. These are the production ZT scales. These are way nicer. Way more expensive. Uh, when you add everything together, I mean, I've got... Between buying the PM2 and the scales, you know, I've got, what, three, 320 into this knife? Where this is, I think... 240 or something like that so yeah more money but it's my jam and uh this really isn't it's super cool but yeah woodland saved my butt from sasquatch so <laughs> you sold your horse for free uh, i i you know what i'm afraid of horses so i will fully admit i am terrified of horses and they know it so as soon as i get on them they freak out so uh yeah 
can just make sure you don't want to get rid of the knife down the line. I mean, I kept all the parts, so uh, yeah, all I did was swap the scales, and I'm not into modifying enough that I would ever do anything to the blade. I think I'm, I'm always just going to leave the blade okay, because like you said, in case I want to sell it down the line, I have the original brown scales that came with this PM2. I can swap them back in if I need to, so I, I would assume if I ever buy a knife from anybody and it's more than a year old, I'm going to just assume it's been taken apart and put back together um if it's been carried at all but maybe some people aren't like that but yeah and i've thought about getting a micarta scale or something for my domino but i kind of like my domino the way it is so if you haven't bench made bug out oh i know those jc customs works uh bench made bug out scales on etsy oh my lord those are so pretty but i've also heard yes what you said He's a tad, I've heard he's a tad sketchy. I can neither confirm nor deny, because I do not know the gentleman. I didn't want to disparage his character. But, um, yeah, I've heard that it just takes a long time to get him. I'm going to pull out this bug out right now, actually. Ow. Yeah, this is another knife I carry a whole lot lately. The bug out is super cool. It is, I really like this. It's, uh, and I, I think in the, on the, comparison i think i gave it a tie with a native five lightweight and i still maintain that but for me personally i've been carrying this more than the native five lightweight but i've owned a native five lightweight for quite a while so i think it's uh just a sake of boredom so uh i'm gonna i'm gonna take a bite of a uh, girl scout cookie because that's always it's girl scout cookie season guys i hope you guys got yours well you no know, the 531 is kind of similar But I just like how light this is, and I really love the blade shape. I really like a no nonsense, no nonsense sort of blade shape that's just, you know, do whatever with. It's just these kind of all-purpose sort of ones. So, oh, you got an LC two hundred native five. I'm, I've never touched LC two hundred. I don't. I'm eager to someday, but I've never pulled the trigger on anything that had it. Here's an interesting question for, for the group, and this is something I'm thinking about doing a video on, so maybe you're helping me out. When you guys shop for a knife, do you shop for the pattern, meaning the you know shape and everything, the shape of the blade, shape of the handle and all that? Do you look at that first, or do you look at the steel first? I always wonder that. I think I'm more of a pattern first guy, because I'm tolerable at sharpening. So even if it's lower end steel, I know that I can keep it sharp. So what? That's my question. Do you shop for pattern first, or do you shop for steel first? Yeah, design first, feel. I think that's how I am too. Yeah, I can I can figure out the, the steel, but I know some people will just completely write off write off a knife immediately because they're they're just like, well, the steel's crap, so forget it. But yeah. Cool, it looks like we mostly agree on that. Yeah, I'm thinking about doing a video about that, about what, what, which one, one versus the other. Because if it's not comfortable, you're not going to use it. So it doesn't matter if it's, if it's unobtainium awesome steel. If it hurts your hand, you're not going to use it. So I don't mean to hold this as an example, because this actually is a pretty good shape and pattern to it. But here's the one that has a terrible shape and pattern. This is the one I use. Like, I don't care what the hell they made this out of i don't care if it was you know magic male enhancement penis steel i still wouldn't want to carry it much because it's just a it's just awful <laughs> so i don't, don't mean to keep bashing on the kershaw shuffle but uh i've i got it for free and that was the right price so um I wish that uh I wish that there was um a, more companies that made custom scales. We kind of got off on this custom thing. That there's more companies that made custom scales that you can just get uh that you could just order and have. You know, like we got into this is an MXG gear clip, you know, you can you can just order and buy these. I wish that scales were more like that that you could just order and buy them. I assume there's some reason why that there's uh it must not be profitable or something that but it, you you have to be on 
find the guy on Instagram, find him on Etsy, all this stuff. I just wish there was like a nice site you could go to and just buy custom scales. It would be cool. So, yeah, there are a lot of guys who do, but they're all like on, on YouTube, they're on Etsy, they're on Instagram. It would just be cool if you could just pop on and... Yeah, Blades We Love has a bunch, but still, like, I just wish there were more. I can wish for more if you want. Oh, you got a Fair, Fair and Forge Falcon. Um, I had the Crux guy loan me. That was that was pretty cool. I really like the Crux. The Falcon doesn't really do it for me. I don't know why. Just the general design shape isn't isn't my jam. But I do love this Mass Drop stuff, man. They're doing some awesome things. I am super excited about the Schwartz Perpetua. May still wind up getting a gent. I'm on the fence, but um, yeah, there. The, the, this mass drop thing with knives is awesome. It really, really is. The only thing that makes me upset about it is I had some uh, two different Kaisers that the the Vanguard series that I wanted to sell. And I can't sell them because Mass Drop occasionally lets them go for like 50 bucks. And there's, so no one wants to buy a used Kaiser one. You can just wait around and maybe one will pop up for 50 bucks instead of 80. And that's, that's really annoying, but that's not Mass Drop's fault. You know, I guess it's Kaiser's fault for letting them go that fast. So yeah, if you ever, selling a used Kaiser Vanguard is a nightmare. It really is. Mr. Gearbear, you should make videos. He lives right down the road from me. We could we could make videos we could make videos together. That sounded a bit suggestive. That's not what I meant, but um we are gonna try and get together this week. By the way, Mr. Gearbear, I'm going to email you as soon as this is over. I would like to uh meet up later this week. I think I'm finally gonna be free enough to have some time to do that. So like Thursday ish and uh do some do some talking and stuff. It'd be cool. So it'd be cool to meet one of my viewers in person. What's the next modern traditional in the works? Um, don't currently have one in the works, but I'm um, I'm always keeping my eye out. Uh, I almost bought definitely not a modern traditional, but I almost bought a GEC the other day, and I pulled it up. It was on Collector Knives. I don't even remember which one it was. M. I looked it up and I thought, well, maybe. And then I went down and ate a sandwich and came back and they were gone. <laughs> so I didn't get it. But uh, that's such as life with GECs. I'm really not, I'm not going to do another modern traditional until I actually get my hands on a really good GEC. Whether, whether it's um, uh, on the secondary market or whatever, I really want to get my hands on a traditional traditional and i want it to be a gec and play with it for a while and then i'll go back yeah lion steel i have one where did i just put it i oh i didn't pull it out i opened the drawer yep i have a round head and i love it to tiny little pieces so no i do not want to sell you this round head sean laverne i do not i will not do that i really like it so yeah urban trapper is one that i kind of thought of so and is there a silent flipper? No. You're just going to make clicky noises all over the house. That this is the bane of our existence is clicky. Yeah, I thought maybe you did, Mr. Gear Bear. I wasn't going to impose myself and ask if I could borrow one. But uh, since you brought it up. Can I borrow a couple of your GECs, Mr. Gear Bear? I promise to be really nice to them. Or maybe even buy one off you. GECs are hard to get, the really good ones. I, and my weird thing with traditionals and, and modern traditionals is that I like I like uh, single blades. I don't like the multi-blade ones, so I, do, I want single blades. And those ones go like that, which indicates to me, maybe you should frickin' make some more of them. But that's not what their thought is. Their thought is to keep them in high demand, I guess. So. All right, we're going to start wrapping up here. I'll still answer a few questions as we get through this. But again, the big announcement was, if you're just joining us, sometime around the 1st of April, Slicey Dicey Podcast on all of your audio-tronic devices, iTunes, Google Play, all that stuff, 
I'm going to also, we'll put it up on YouTube on a separate channel from the actual Slicey Dicey channel. There'll be a separate one because I have two awesome partners in this, in Zelric and Stasa23. They're going to be helping me out. They know a lot more about this stuff than I do. I know a lot about doing podcasting. They know a lot more about knives, so it's a perfect match. And we're three guys that get along well, but don't agree all the time. So I think it's going to be very, very fun. I think it's going to be a lot of fun to listen to when you're driving or flying or whatever. So very happy to have those two guys on board. They are definitely were my two dream team. They were the two that I wanted, and they both said, yeah, sure. So awesome. Uh, we'll have guests occasionally, too. Um, probably not for the first one. I think we just want to get through the first one and just uh, get that. So, all right. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. No, it's not an S30. No, this is not a pair of three. This is a PM2 with custom scale. So, all right. Watch Stasa. He's very good, very smart dude. And Stasa and I think will agree more than Zell. <laughs> well, maybe we're just going to wind up ganging up on Zell, but but Zell is super knowledgeable. He does. He does, um, yeah, he actually makes knives and stuff. We don't, we don't, um, make knives, so he'll bring in that bit of knowledge and everything, so. All right, hope you guys have enjoyed this. We're going to wrap this up. We're coming up on an hour, so, and thank you, Paul Wheeler, for subscribing. I appreciate it. There'll be more news on the podcast when we get closer to it. Uh, again, we're probably going to tape it in a week or so, and then, yep, and yeah, and Zell is the U.S. We rep, so. All right. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. And thanks again, million times over, for helping me reach a thousand subs so quickly. I was very, very, very excited that that happened. I did not expect it to happen that quickly. And, you know, next giveaway is probably going to be at 2,000, I would imagine. And I'm going to work on some awesome stuff. I got to keep topping myself. So, hope you guys have enjoyed this. I have been Brian. You guys have been awesome. Have a good one.